Are you tired of watching hours of confusing videos by guitar music theory experts on YouTube and still not understanding a darn thing they're on about? Then you need Song, the Guitar Chord Family app. Song organizes 6,000 guitar chords into their relative major and minor keys, showing you all the ones that sound good together. Downloading Song is like downloading music theory straight into your brain. Try it now for free. Link is in the description. Okay, I wanted to show you this thing. I don't even know what this is, to be quite honest with you. Um, I have never seen another one exactly like it. I mean, I know that it is a resonator mandolin, but I've never seen one with the wasted uh, guitar body like this. I don't know who made it. I think it's probably Regal in Chicago, and I can give you some reasons why I think that. Uh, but this fellow who owns this, uh, he wanted me to take a look at it, but I'm just not going to have time. Uh, it, he dropped It was dropped off a while back, and uh, he's going to have, uh, I think, somebody with a little more time on their hands who can get to this a little sooner and maybe take a look at it. But here's the thing. Um, first of all, uh, I believe what I would have done to this has already been done once, and that's to remove the fretboard and remove the neck and... Uh, do some neck work on this. The neck has got a bow to it, um, and also the neck angle is just is pretty abysmal. Uh, so what would end up what would have to happen with this is the this would have to be shaved the heel and the neck angle changed so that it, it cocked this back uh, because as you can see you know this is a resonator so the the resonator uh, biscuit which there isn't actually. A real biscuit in this and we'll look at that in a minute as well but the bridge I, I guess I should say uh, for the resonator sets up too high um, and you know without a better neck angle this thing will never be playable so um, that was the thing I was gonna have to do if I had done the repair on this but like I said this is gonna go back and he gave me the okay to just go ahead and do a video of just looking over the thing before we uh, give it back and and have him try to um, have someone else authenticate what exactly it might be, which I, I told him I think this probably is some kind of prototype. You know, there's some things that lead me to believe that. First of all, I've never seen another one. Never seen one exactly like this. Now, maybe there are some out there. I'm not saying this is the only one or that this is a prototype. I'm just saying from my point of view, uh, from what I can see, uh, this likely is some kind of prototype. Now, uh, a couple things. The uh, fretboard, you can tell it's painted. Which, I mean, a lot of uh, resonator instruments um, were made a little uh, more cheaply because they were made by Regal in Chicago. And that's not to say Regal was cheap stuff, really. They did make some quality instruments. But um, this is not, I don't believe, a, uh, a an actual national resonator. Um, there are a couple reasons for that. Uh, one of which is where it was turned up. Uh, he said he actually bought this in Louisville. Uh, from a guy named Jimmy Brown, who is uh, kind of locally famous for being a, a music store owner. Um, and I think at the time he was told that it was turned up here in Louisville. So this thing being from Louisville uh, tells me that it likely came from Chicago, um, which was the only place that was really making resonators. If, this, if we were further to the West geographically, you know, or if we were in California or somewhere like that, I would say maybe this has a good chance of, of being a na an actual national. Um, and also the other thing about this is there's no uh, there's no serial number on the end of the headstock like uh, a lot of nationals, early nationals would have. So this tells me this thing is probably from the late 30s. It's definitely pre-war, I would say, because during the war... Um, they wouldn't have been able to make anything like this with the steel body. It just was pretty much out. All the war effort kind of put an end to all all that, um, and kind of really put an end to resonator instruments in general for a long time. Uh, they weren't really produced after the war in great numbers like they were before the war. So really, we're looking at a time frame of the late twenties to the very early nineteen forties, maybe nineteen forty one, as being the the time frame that this could fit in. And really, I think more specifically, we could say this is probably uh, 1936 to 1940, somewhere right in there, that that time band. Um, is really the only time this thing probably could have taken shape and, and uh, been designed by somebody. We do have the headstock here that's got a, it's got some kind of, I don't know, 
latent inlay or something where something uh, may have been at one time and looks like may have been filled in uh, but it was a square you could see there so something was on there and I'm wondering if it was some kind of custom inlay possibly um, we do have mandolin uh, tuners on this and it looks like it was originally drilled for for mandolin tuners so there's no you know there's no other holes that were filled or anything like that so it wasn't converted from something else I do think the tuners might be on backwards like so maybe they've been off at some point and somebody swapped them around because usually you know you would see them the other direction now I could be wrong um, but this thing has definitely been worked on before uh, like I said this neck has been off you can see the remnants of some glue here you can see uh, just kind of where it's a little bit separated and you can see some glue down in that joint right there. So that tells me this thing has definitely been uh, off the fretboard at some point. And that's one of the steps I would have taken to uh, restore this to playable condition would have been to remove the fretboard and then remove the neck. The necks are, on these are not as easy or not as hard rather uh, to remove as like a typical acoustic instrument. Um, there is a... Uh, there's usually a, a thing on the inside, a bar that you can remove, and the whole thing should slide out. Another thing that leads me to believe this um, this probably has had some changes in its history, or could have been even a prototype, is that this tailpiece right here, first of all, the tailpiece slips up uh, under the lip of uh, this this cover, and I don't know, it just doesn't seem like something that a manufacturer who was making this their final product would have done. And plus, they didn't drill the extra holes for uh, to secure this. So this wasn't secured with a couple of extra screws there. Now, maybe they were trying to cut corners on this model or something like that. And that's why they didn't drill out those additional screws. But... That also leads me to believe, like I said, that this tailpiece might not be original, uh, possibly. Now, I'm not saying it isn't. I'm just saying it possibly is not original. Or, or if it is original, uh, that lends a little bit more credence to the idea that this is some kind of one-off prototype. That I don't know. Maybe I was talking to him like maybe this was a custom job uh, for somebody. But more likely, it would have been uh, one of those things where they were going to make a signature model. Uh, possibly for you know um, a mandolin player uh, and he wanted a resonator and they were going to make some kind of signature model possibly or you know make another model and this was uh, you know the one that they get they made to test out and it just ne didn't meet their standards or they'd never put in pr into production or whatever the case but here we are with this thing uh, very interesting the um Owner did give me permission to go ahead and we're going to cut the strings on this in this video. We're going to remove this plate. We'll uh, look at what's under here. We'll take a little better look at the resonator, which doesn't look to me. And there's what it sounds like more. I mean, it's out of tune, obviously. But, but you can get an idea of what it could sound like if it played. Um, but I'm not sure what this resonator is even made of. It looks to me like it might be tin uh, or, or something like that, and maybe not aluminum. I, I don't know. It's it's just got an odd color. Aluminum would be a little brighter than that, so I, I'm thinking it might be like a tin. I don't know. But anyway, we're going to get this off and take a look at it. So let's go ahead and clip these strings, and we'll, we'll do that. And I told this fellow if he... Uh, if he let me take a look at it and do a you know a little closer closer up uh, film on it by clipping the strings and all that, um, that I would try to get you guys to help me off and help him too I'll authenticate what it is um, and figure out what it is. Man, I'm throwing strings everywhere. So if anyone knows uh, what this thing is, who made it. Um, if I'm wrong, if I'm right, whatever, whatever it is that you know about it, if you have one or you know someone who has one, definitely comment uh, down below and let this guy know uh, what he's got here because, you know, like I said, I don't. I think it's certainly unique from anything that I've ever seen. So we do have these flathead screws, but they look 
they look galvanized, so I don't know if these are period. I, I, as a matter of fact, I don't think that they are. Yeah, I don't think those screws are original. I think someone, uh, whoever did the neck work the last time this was worked on, probably put these screws on. And they could have also put this this tailpiece on. Who, who knows what kind of state this thing was in uh, the last time it was worked on. You know, and this thing could have been just a bunch of parts. Who knows? But all of the actual mandolin resonators that I've seen are like the teardrop A-style shape um, and not anything like this. Okay, so I thought it might be a little bit entertaining and instructive at this point to pause and take a look at a couple of resonator mandolins that did actually exist in production form. The first one I want to look at here is an early 1930s or late 1920s National. Now, Nationals, they had a couple of different styles, but generally speaking, they had a spun cone, and it was an aluminum cone, and you can kind of see here how it's kind of in a spiral spun shape, and it protrudes upward. And on top of this upward protrusion in the center, there is a biscuit. That's what that little round piece is called that the saddle sits into. Uh, also, early nationals on the end of the headstock, they had a stamped serial number. Now, this bears absolutely no resemblance to anything national ever made. Therefore, I think national is completely ruled out as, as, as a probability for this or even a possibility in my mind. Uh, here's another example of a national that is all silver. Uh, on, on the national ones, usually they were uh, chrome-plated. Uh, they weren't just left bare. Now, a lot of regal instruments were kind of left bare steel, so this uh, really more points to regal in, in just about all aspects. Here is an example of a late 30s regal-made uh, instrument. Now, I think they also made these under the Dobro name. Uh, Regals uh, did make Dobro instruments in the late 1930s, and they also made regal-branded instruments at the same time that Dobro was making their instruments uh, on the West Coast. So basically what Dobro did was they kind of farmed out sort of their East Coast production to the Chicago manufacturer Regal. And I think they did this really to sh save on shipping. And this is kind of what I was talking about earlier. This is why I think this most likely was Regal made. So you, and you can also see the difference in the type of cone. The uh, Dopira brothers, who broke off from National early on, they actually f helped form National, and then they broke off and formed their own company. And they had to change the shape of the cone because they had patented this sh uh, other shape of cone with the biscuit bridge. Uh, so they had to pretty much rethink the whole thing. So basically, they came up with the spider bridge. And this is a cone type that goes downward. And then there is a spider on top of that that that's, uh, holds the actual saddle. And then there is a screw that ex protrudes downward from the saddle um, to kind of brace the cone and to, to hold everything together. So it's really just a completely different way of manufacturing. But also, interestingly enough, at least two companies we know of, two New Jersey companies, one uh, called the Fretted Instrument Manufacturing Corporation and one called United Guitar Company were the subject of a 1941 complaint that alleged that both of them were distributing fake resonator or faux resonator guitars. So basically what these were was they looked like a resonator from the outside because they had a cover like a resonator on top, but really underneath it was just the plain top of the guitar that was painted in a silver uh, paint to make it look like a resonator. So it looks as if both of these companies kind of ceased manufacturing these things, but there might've been other companies too that were doing this. But I think that's kind of what we're looking at here more with this thing, it seems, at least in its current form. Now this is sort of a faux resonator and you'll kind of see what I mean here. Check this out. So the resonator on this thing is, is really, really dented up. It's really collapsed. And to get this thing uh, playable, is it's gonna have to be lifted. And the thing is, somebody tried at some point to glue this, like, really, really ill-advised thing. They tried to, um, and wow, there's a, there's an under, there's an under support on that. I don't, I think, wow, what is, oh, this isn't metal at all. Is it? Yeah, I guess maybe it is, but wow. Hang on. That's not metal. That's some kind of... Uh, 
that's some kind of paper. I mean, you can actually see the, hang on. Okay, this is not, this is not what you expect to see for a resonator. This is, this is, I don't know if you can see the grain or the texture in this, but this is some kind of paper, cardboard or what have you. Um, it, this is not, I guess it sounds somewhat metallic. Maybe it's sandwiched. There's a sandwich here. There's like a couple of pieces of this stuff sandwiched together. And then you've got this bridge on top and this thing on the bottom. I don't know. This is not something that's going to be able to be used, I don't think, on this instrument going forward. I think whatever he ends up doing with this, this resonator is going to have to be replaced by an actual piece of aluminum, some kind of aluminum resonator that will fit this hole. Uh, you might even have to either make your own, uh, spin your own resonator, uh, have one of the manufacturers spin a custom one, or get one that's close and perhaps trim it down to work. But it's also going to have to fit up under this. And the thing is, I don't see any patent numbers, any markings whatsoever on this. I just see just metal. I would think that if, it, if this was some production thing, you would see at least one patent number or one, you know, something somewhere. But this... This, this is garbage. I mean, for, first of all, it's dented to hell. And second of all, it's just complete garbage. I just don't see this being a playable instrument using this at all. Um, and I'm not even sure if it's original, first of all. Uh, who knows? It could be. Like I said, this could have been a, something where this was uh, received into inventory, into, the, uh, into Jimmy Brown's inventory, as just a bunch of pieces and this was something that was thrown together by the people who worked with him maybe I don't know I, like I said I don't know the exact history on this but but that's um, that's making sense in my mind All right, so we got a couple bolts that hold the neck on they don't go all the way to the end block like most resonators that that is kind of a that's that's kind of bad um, and that's probably why the neck is taking such a dive really to fix this you would want um, you would want a some kind of some kind of dowel that goes into the neck down here you'd want the dowel to go into here and then out and then down to the uh, to the to the lower portion of the instrument down here to the end block where where well where the end block should be but you'd want it to go back here and then screw it in back here so that you would be able to move it um, and change the neck angle so you'd want it to be a pretty sturdy dowel that would that would run the length of the instrument and this has no such thing there's nothing in here to stabilize this to to stabilize the neck so uh, I think really also to be playable um, this would that this would probably end up needing that because I don't, I don't see those two screws being able to hold this in such a way that it's going to... Because see, look right here, probably the neck angle is right, right there. But look, I can, just with my hands, I can move this. See that? And it looks like also like somebody uh, may have added this shim right here at some stage in the past as well. I, it's just, it's kind of hard to say, but that is a distinct possibility that that shim was added to correct an angle issue in the distant past or maybe even at the time that it was made it, that shim was kind of put in there to correct an issue um, you can see the seams you can see there's been some soldering over the years uh, where someone maybe has tried to repair it but you can see that seam right there where the two pieces of metal were uh, bound at that point So I don't know. Uh, you guys, tell me what you think about this thing. This is definitely a, a curiosity. This is, um, you know, it's it's completely obscure as far as I'm concerned, the history of it. I, I have a lot of books on just um, old instruments in general, and I've never seen another one like this. I've never seen one, a mandolin resonator, anything like this, shaped like a guitar. Um, 
Let me know down in the comments if you guys have ever seen anything like this, what you might know about it, uh, what you might be able to tell this guy. So the only other thing that I guess I really know is that, uh, you know, the, one of the things that points to Chicago for me is that this appears to be, the uh, the uh, fretboard appears to be painted um, pear wood, very much like you would see on a lot of, uh, a lot of regal made instruments. Um, you know, so that's a lighter wood that's been painted black and that's just kind of consistent with a lot of regal stuff. And a lot of the resonators that they were making as well in the late thirties were kind of like this. So I, I don't know. Um, I'm just guessing and that's pretty much all I've got is guesswork and speculation and, uh, you know, it edu just educated guessing. So... Maybe somebody else out there knows more than me, and I hope that's the case. So let me know down in the comments if you guys have ever seen anything like this or if you know something that I do not.